Hello everyone and welcome to round 6 of this year's Qatar Masters. We have a wonderful game that was also played on board 6 between Gukesh and Vaishali just finished so uh, I decided to show it right away. It's a really wonderful attacking game. You guys will enjoy it and uh, a lot of cool variations to cover. Plus also you will have a nice pause the video moment to enjoy. And um, uh, I have uh, did some investigating and uh, I... Uh, I can't uh, seem to figure out what is this buzzing sound that you guys hear. Because some of you in the comments say that you can hear a buzzing sound on my videos and some of you say that you cannot hear them. Even though some of you use headphones, some of you use uh, normal speakers. Uh, um, I, 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 I think it's uh, probably some sort of a frequency that I myself don't hear. And that's why I have no idea what to fix. So I, I, have, I have tried some tweaks, so maybe it worked now. So just let me know in the comments if you still hear the, the buzzing sound because I, I, I don't know how to approach the problem as I myself don't hear any noise. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's check it out. And if it doesn't work, I'm, I, I will tweak, uh, tweak something else for the next video and also, you know, fix my cables. Maybe it will uh, fix itself then. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, Gukesh has the white pieces and he opened with c4. He goes for the English opening, but very quickly we transpose into the pseudo Taraj. We have pawn to e6, the Ajinkur defends to the English. Knight f3, pawn to d5, and now pawn to d4. We have pawn to c5, the so called pseudo Taraj. Uh, and c captures, e captures, and pawn to g3. Gukesh prepares to pianket to his light square bishop. Knight to f6, we have bishop to g2, and knight to c6. We have castles, bishop to e7, knight to c3, and castles. So this has all been played before, nothing new here. Uh, bishop to g5, and now there are uh, three main ideas here. Uh, you could go bishop to e6, you could capture on d4, uh, or you could advance the pawn to c4. This is the second most popular continuation. This is what Vaishali opts for. Pawn to e3 and now bishop to e6. Uh, we have knight to d2. Uh, and now uh, there are a couple of games where uh, queen to a5 was played. Also knight to d7 is a known move. But here we have pawn to h6. And it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so, okay, we have a trade on f6, bishop captures, bishop captures, and now uh, Gukesh challenges the c4 pawn by playing pawn to b3. We have captures, captures, and now the real question is how to defend your d5 pawn. Okay, it's defended by the bishop and by the queen, but it's, the, it's attacked by the knight, by the bishop, and by the queen. So Vaishali has to figure this out as her b7 pawn is also hanging. So she handles all of it by playing knight to a5. Uh, this defends the uh, b7 pawn and also takes away the b3 and c4 squares from the white queen. So the white queen now has to step back. You could also attack the knight, but it doesn't matter. B6 will defend the knight. And now d5 is sufficiently defended. For example, if something like rook a b1, you might even get some g5 ideas with the g4 uh, trying to um, uh, fully control the king side. Uh, but in the game, Gukesh went for queen to b2. His idea is that, okay, if uh, knight to c4 is ever played, he will capture, and then his light square bishop will open up uh, to attack black's queen side. So queen to d7, we have rook f to c1, and now rook a to c8. We have pawn to a4, pawn to a6, at some point of course b5 is coming, and now queen to a2. A, a, a4 pawn has, uh, a pawn has moved to uh, a4, and now the d5 pawn is again attacked by the knight, bishop, and by the queen. Uh, rook f to d8, now the rook defends the pawn as well, and now rook a to b1. Uh, bishop to e7, and now knight to e2. Gukesh has to figure out how to create some chances here. He does, uh, of course, have some weaknesses in black's position, but uh, he has the white pieces. He's playing um, uh, an opponent who is uh, more than 300 rating points lower rated than him. So, of course, you have to uh, go, go for the win, of course. Rook captures on c1. Rook captures on c1, and now bishop to b4. Uh, nicely developing the bishop. The bishop is very active here. Knight to b3 and now knight to c4. Uh, we have knight to f4 uh, going after the bishop here, but of course you don't want to just capture it. If you capture, then f captures on e6 and she fixes her pawn structure. So pawn to b6 and now knight to a1. Remaneuvering the knight here. Uh, rook to c8 and now pawn to h4. Grabbing more space on the king's side. Bishop to a3 and now rook to c3. I'm going for uh, a nice rook lift here. So now if the knight moves, of course, uh, the bishop will hang. So bishop back to b4 and now rook to c2. Avoiding uh, an attempt of a repetition with rook to c1. So rook to c2 right away. And here uh, Vaishali should go for the passive looking bishop to d6. But it's actually a very active move. Uh, this sort of... Uh, 
Uh, not that, that she, she should go for it, but it, just that it's objectively best. For example, bishop to d6. And now, even though the d5 pawn uh, is sort of hanging, you you can give it up. Knight captures on d5, you will play b5, captures, captures. And now, uh, the, the knight can't really move. If you move the knight to avoid um, some tactics like bishop captures, bishop captures, and bishop captures on g3, followed by queen captures on d5, uh, you... you might move it back but then this uh again is just perfectly fine for black if pawn captures then queen picks up the d4 pawn and if you play g captures then even bishop to d5 and the position is now lost for white as you've completely busted open the um, uh white king side the rook can easily come into the attack the queen can come into the attack so this would be very bad for him of course uh, so what he should do after, for example, he captures on um, uh, b5, not go knight to f4, so a place like knight to b3, the game continues, and after, let's say, captures, captures, uh, bishop captures on g3, you can even go for bishop captures on c4, and now it's just going to be a force to draw b captures on c4, knight c5 attacks the queen, you give up the bishop on g3, captures, captures, rook to g2, and now queen captures, or queen to e1, check first, of course, uh, and controlling this diagonal, you will have sufficient resources for a draw by repetition. So that's one way to do it. She decided to go for activity. She played pawn to b5 right away. And now a captures on b5. We have a captures on b5 and now rook to c1. Uh, we have bishop to d2 attacking the rook and trying to give up the... Uh, two pieces for uh, the rook here. Point is that if rook captures on c4, for example, d captures on c4 and queen captures, yes, you do have two pieces for the rook, but the uh, b and c pawn are past pawns, and this is just very, very scary to play against. So instead, after bishop to d2, rook to b1 was played, and now we have pawn to b4. Uh, again, interestingly, I will show a line, uh, as this is classical chess, I will just show a line that is really awesome and starts with bishop to f5. You attack the rook here, and now, look at this, knight to b3 goes after the, the, the bishop here, uh, bishop captures on e3, or you could go for uh, 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 bishop captures rook on b1, and then after queen captures on b1, then play bishop captures on e3. But this uh, is even better, bishop captures on e3, f captures, and now bishop captures on b1, queen captures, and now rook to e8. So you're down material, but you have some uh, excellent counterplay as you have a passed b pawn. The e3 pawn is very weak. The queen will also infiltrate the king side. The g3 pawn is very weak. Something like, let's say, knight c5 attacks the queen. Queen comes to g4. You can uh, play knight captures on d5, queen captures on g3, and now if knight e4 attacks the queen, even queen captures on h4. Queen captures on b5, and now... As you are once again controlling this diagonal very nicely, you can even give up the knight with rook to a8, going after uh, some sort of a checkmate, and white will not be able to capture on c4. So you're going to have to play something like knight e to f6 with check, g captures, knight e7 check, and after king to f8, even knight to g6 check. Uh, idea being that after f captures you will play queen to b4 with check and now you want to uh, force the king to the seventh rank to play queen to b7 check again not to capture the rook because you can capture that rook always uh it's basically white who is um fighting for a draw so king to e8 you will play queen b5 check king to d8 Queen to d5 check and after king to e7, again queen to b7 with check uh, with um you know multiple perpetual checks uh, so this is uh, definitely in the position after uh, this, uh, sorry, uh, after this, uh, uh, sorry, 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 uh, here after this rook to b1 move. Uh, but bishop to f5 was not played, Vaishali went for pawn to b4 right away. I told you the position is really, really crazy, so, so sorry about that. Uh, she went for pawn to b4, as one always should. She does have nice control over the um, uh, b2 square, so if she can cross the b3 square, uh, will be very nice. So knight to b3, uh, going after the bishop once again, and now bishop to c3. Uh, knight to c5, attacking the queen, and just queen to d6. Uh, we have rook to c1, uh, and now rook to b8. Now preparing to advance the pawn. Uh, the, okay, for the moment the knight and queen are defending it, but uh, now the, the, the white pieces are kind of stuck and can't really move. And here, if you go for knight c captures on e6, that's actually very much playable. F captures, now you can play bishop to h3, uh, and the black will have to go back, while Shali will have to move the rook to help out with the defense of the pawn. But Gukesh went queen to a7, and this is where the game really becomes interesting. Here we have pawn to b3, 
And uh, now there are two moves here. One that is uh, clearly winning and one that it's winning, but it's impossible for you to calculate that it's winning. Uh, or maybe it's not for Gukesh because there's knight captures on e6 and the other knight can also capture on e6. So Gukesh played knight f captures on e6. Uh, but uh, uh, winning is much, much simpler with knight c captures on e uh, c6. And um, this is why. Uh, b2, of course, she will play this in all the lines as this is a hypothetical line. Rook to b1. And now the uh, real defense that we have to calculate, not, not f captures on e6, but rather knight to d2. This is a defense that... Um, uh, w will not work uh, in this particular line if, if this knight captures because uh, now bishop captures on d5 is possible the knight here guards the bishop and after knight captures on b1 there's knight to g5 and now how are you defending uh, look at this the queen captures on f7 is coming if you play rook to f8 there's bishop captures on f7 with check and after king h8 there's queen to e7 uh, absolutely incredible sacrificing the queen or you know just uh uh, you know, completely obliterating uh, black. Uh, there's nothing to be played here. If captures knight to g6, uh, a, a beautiful smothered mate, um, uh, or maybe this isn't called a smothered mate, as uh, you know, probably a smothered mate is when there there are pieces uh, right next to the black king, but also you know, uh, a, a beautiful knight mate. So that's what would happen if knight c captures uh, on, uh, on e6 was played. But Gukash played knight f captures on e6, and this is actually a lot more complicated. Point being that after pawn to b2 that Vaishali played rook to b1, uh, she played f captures on e6, which loses the game on the spot, as she was very, very low on time. This moved 36, and she was below 30 seconds uh, to, to make time control. Uh, but now knight to d2 uh, is a bit different, because now bishop captures on d5 is no longer a move. So here, the win would be rook captures on b2, rook captures on b2, and now knight to f4. Uh, knight to e4 and now knight to d7 controlling uh, some squares here going after queen to a8 with check and now rook to b8 will impo be impossible as the knight controls the b8 square so king to h7 and now bishop to h3 queen to c6 and now knight to e5 and now uh, after rook to b1 check and the king moves let's say queen to b7 you will be able to trade here okay black doesn't get checkmated uh, but you will capture the d5 pawn and now the resulting end game is winning for white because white is just up too much material uh, black is up the exchange but uh, the white pawns are are too strong and best for black would be in order to avoid uh, losing the game terribly would be just to give up um, add a piece for some pawns here captures captures and captures uh, but then you would have uh, basically a rook and knight versus two knight and bishop three pawns each so it's basically rook for a knight and bishop which in the long run uh, gukesh should win but uh, this is with absolute best defense and why the other knight capturing was better in that position not knight f captures on e6 but rather knight c captures on e6 however vaishali just played f captures on e6 and now uh his position is completely winning in in but a move but it has to be the correct move of course Feel free to pause the video and to win the game for Gukesh while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this very tricky idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is night captures on E6. And that's it. Uh, checkmate is being threatened on g7, and if queen captures on e6, then queen captures on b8 comes with check, and that is enough to win the game. Queen captures on e6 was played, now comes queen captures on b8 check, king to h7 and queen to b3 now, uh, going after the bishop, and this is another key uh, move uh, in sort of defending and attacking, because knight to d2 with an attack on the queen and rook doesn't work, because after captures, captures, and captures, the knight here is stuck. You cannot defend the knight. If queen to g6, uh, you will simply play pawn to e4, and the knight hangs. That's pretty much it. D captures, queen captures, and uh, that's uh, all there is to it. So in the game after queen b3, queen to f5 was played, attacking the rook on b1, but Gook has just played pawn to e4. And now the bishop will hang on the next move. Uh, this is move 40. Time control has been reached, or rather after d captures and e4, time control has been reached. Uh, but it doesn't help Vaishali as she's now, uh, her, her position is now completely uh, uh, undefendable or indefensible. Uh, I don't know which one should be, well, like maybe they're both correct, but uh, I don't know. I will check after the video. So pawn to e3 was played, and here 
uh, there are, uh, well, this is a last attempt at maybe holding uh, if Gukash makes a terrible blunder or something as, okay, you're attacking F2 and you're also attacking the Rook on B1, uh, but Gukash just played Rook captures on B2 and he was in this position on move 42 that Vaishali resigned the game uh, and this, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, and this is her first loss of the of the tournament. So here you resign because there's, okay, if you play captures on F2, then even rook captures on F2 is a move and the white is just up a full rook. Uh, and of course, if you take the rook, it uh, doesn't really help you. Queen captures and after E captures, queen captures, the D4 pawn is defended, no useful checks. White is just up a full bishop. Uh, of course, completely winning for Gukesh. Uh, so yeah, a very, very nicely played, very, very complicated game. And uh, like I said, it's uh, almost as if uh, Vaishali wasn't satisfied with uh, with playing for a draw against a much, much higher rated opponent. Uh, here we uh, mentioned this where she blasted through with B5 uh, that uh, holding, you know, holding the position with just uh, doing nothing was um, a, a, a bit more precise, but this can also be played it's, uh, perfectly fine. Uh, but you know, it, it's something that that you would play if you if you are looking for more than uh, just holding the position, which uh, is very commendable and is how you should always approach playing uh, stronger players. Because if you just try to hold, and even though if the engine says like it's the best move, if you just try to do nothing, just try to hold against the stronger player, the stronger player will always find a, a way to to defeat you. So activity is the way. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done by uh, Gukesh. Uh, here are the standings uh, after... Sorry, those are not the standings. Uh, let me just check where are my standings. Uh, I've prepared the standings. Those are the opponents. There we go. Just for the... No, why is... Uh very strange oh okay i see what's happening i see what's happening i am being trolled by my computer all right we're very well played sir there we go okay so uh these are the the current standings out of 160 players uh we have uh uh one player in the lead uh arjun Irigesi. he has five out of six. Oh, sorry and the naran and just the caught up with him also with five out of six and then with four and a half out of six, we have Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru Nakamura, Gukesh now with his victory, and uh, Noderbek Abdusatarov. I'm just going to check real quickly uh, as uh, maybe the ta uh, table shifted while uh, I was making the video. Uh, so yeah, we do have some others on four and a half out of six. Uh, so it's uh, on four, uh, four and a half out of six, Magnus, Hikaru, Gukesh, Abdusatarov, uh, Parham Maksudlu, and Murli Kartakian, and David Paravian on four and a half out of six and then Anish Giri with four and a lot of players with four and so on uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh very very uh, wild stuff here the the pseudo Tarash uh you know uh what are you gonna do uh I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Danush and I would like to uh thank congratulations Dr. Sheikh uh, Tucker Berkman, uh, Eddie Indus, and BulletChestThriller.com for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.